I was just wanted to kind of get your assessment of Stanley's play through three games. I mean, he hasn't had one of those patented scoring nights. It's like he's used to flirting with a double double the other night. I know you mentioned his three point defense. Just kind of what's your take on on him through three games? Sorry, Scotty, you were talking about Stanley Mude. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, Stan's you know obviously adjusting to a new system, uh, a go to player at South Dakota for Coach Todd Lee. So his role is kind of, you know, it's a little bit different than, than what he was used to. He started some games. He's come off the bench. Um, you know, he's a guy that we try to run plays to because we think that he can, you know, score the ball in the mid post, score the ball at the elbow. Um, you know, I, I, I think he's got to continue uh, to, to, to utilize his mid-range game. I think at times maybe the three-point shot, um, you know, ha he's looked at that a little bit too much um, but he did knock one down last game that I think helped build his confidence but certainly from a versatility standpoint Stanley's so vital to us both offensively and defensively and then you know I'm not certain on the rule but after Debo's ejection the other night like is he going to be available for the Kansas State game yeah yes Debo is available you know from start to finish uh, for the game in Kansas City against uh, Kansas State so yeah he's 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 full golf. Yeah. Coach? Coach, you mentioned the other day after the game that you had some some new three point uh, defense drills. Uh, how, how has that gone? How's the team kind of been receptive to it? Well, Hutch, we weren't able to really practice yesterday, um, you know, just because two guys played substantial minutes and, and um, you know, Jalen's obviously nursing an, a, an ankle right now. Um, you know, today here in a few minutes, we'll get down and introduce some some new um, three point defensive drills and and uh, you know do a, try to do a better job because because actually you know the strength of of Kansas State is is a three ball hutch so um, guys like number twenty four Pack and and Smith number thirteen and three Miguel and twenty five all those guys were going to really have to, uh, you know, contest their three ball as well as number one, Noel. So it's going to be important that, that we get refocused here today, uh, tomorrow, and then, uh, and then Sunday, once we get to Kansas city and, and practice there in the building that we'll play at on Sunday. Do you like facing a team that, that maybe is a good three point shooting team when you have something specific you want to improve, like to, to get a good test right out of what out of the way, or would you have preferred to maybe face somebody who doesn't shoot the three ball as well as Kansas State does? Well, if we play, if we face somebody who didn't shoot the ball well, we would make them shoot the ball well based on what we've done thus far. So certainly don't want to play a team that their strength is the three ball because we have not exhibited it at all that we understand the importance. Um, I mean, our whole pregame speech going into Northern Iowa game was, was about closing out to three point shooters. And, um, you know, that didn't work. So we got to come up with some new methods to try to get our point across about defending that three point line. Curtis. Hey coach, what's the, the value and, and importance, I guess, of one, just being able to, to test yourself and kind of a, a tournament style environment and two, just being able to kind of get away from home and, and just, you know, test yourself in that way before a conference play. No, I think I, th I really like how our schedules played out. I really, really do. I mean, um, now, now we got a whole new group of guys. We're going to, you know, you become much tighter and closer and your bonding and your chemistry starts really formulate. And once you get on an airplane together, once you get into a hotel together, you wake up, you eat breakfast, you have lunch, you have your pregame meal, and then after the game, you're back eating with the guys. So there's a lot of bonding that's going to take place. Where, you know, you're going to start to really know each other better. You, you have a different roommate on the road than you're living with here. So a um, lot of good things are going to come about, you know, playing this, these two games. Um, but I like the fact that we played three games. We held serve here at home, did what we were supposed to do, um, figuring out roles and rotations a little bit better than we than what we knew going into the season. Now we have two neutral site games against two quality opponents, power five opponents, and then we come back home for four. Um, so 
Uh, I think the schedule, the, you know, the way that, that we worked on it is, is going to, is, is working out to our advantage. Having said that, we got two really good games. And, and if you don't come to play any of the four that are in this tournament, Curtis, you can come back 0-2 really, really quickly. Um, and then, there, and then, and it's, you know, you come back one and one and there's going to be, you know, one, one team that comes back two and oh, and is really happy. Thank you. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate it, Curtis. Bob. Yeah. Um, happy birthday. I guess it's 57, right? 57. Thanks, it, Bob. It, you have to get like, Hey man, 57 is young. <laughs> You have to get a Pines 57 t-shirt or something. See you repping cross country for tomorrow. That's nice. Um, you mentioned spurt ability, I guess, on your radio show. And then after the game, well, what do you think um, is the key? Well, why are you guys good good at putting runs together so far? Uh, well, I think we have some streaky players, you know, that can, they can really score in bunches, to be honest with you, Bob. I mean, um, you know, J.D. can score – you know, eight quickly. Um, Stan can score quickly. Chris Likes can score quickly. Um, Devo, we got a lot of guys that can that can can hit you really really quickly. And then with the pace we play at, and sometimes our shot selection, that allows you to play spurts. Some teams that walk the ball up the floor or play a little bit slower, it's hard for those teams to go on scoring runs. It's a little bit easier you know, for teams that play with a little more pace to, to, to go on scoring spurts. And then, you know, how much does defense play in that? Like the other night you guys got stops, you know, in the open court, uh, JD got a steal and got the ball to, to Jalen pretty quick for a dunk. How much does defense play into that too? Yeah, no, I, I mean, defense plays a lot into, you know, how quickly you can, you can put point, points on the board. It's really hard to go on scoring runs or scoring spurts if, if you're not getting defensive stops and defensive rebounds well and and, and open floor turnovers too isn't that, that a big part of it yeah i mean i think the live ball turnovers creating steals getting deflections i mean you're going to score a really really high clip on any live ball turnovers especially the further or the closer they are to your rim and the further they are from the opponent's rim allows you to score you know very very quickly as well one more, Bruce Weber said uh, he brought you into Illinois. I don't know, I'm guessing this is maybe between uh, Sacramento and when you got into college coaching. Um, he said you did a, he brought you in for a clinic, I guess, or demonstration. Or so he said you did a nice job. He still does some of the things that you talked about. Just wondering what you remember about that and kind of what you think of Bruce. Coach Weber's, you know, one of the best coaches in, in college basketball. Um, he, he did ask me to come when he was at Illinois to, um, you know, come and, and, and speak at one of his coaching clinics. And um, it was awesome to be around him and his staff. Um, he's someone that I've looked up to, admired um, throughout his career. His teams always play hard. They, they really execute. They play with basketball IQ. Um, you know, he's one of the coaching legends in, in college uh, basketball for sure. And, and, um, I remembered, I didn't know he remembered that I came. I remembered him, you know, having me come and, and ask me while I wasn't working, um, you know, to come and speak. And, and it was an honor to, you know, to speak to, to, to his, to, to the, to the group that he had coaching wise at that clinic. So you, you don't think you're that, that memorable? I, mean, no, I didn't, I didn't know if he remembered or not. Okay. Well, he seemed to remember pretty well. And that, that was probably like 07, 08 or something like that. I mean, it was in between one of the times I got fired, Bob. I, I don't, I mean, I can't remember if it was after the Warriors or Kings or it was after one of those dismissals. Oh, okay. Okay. They, they mean to make a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> Nate. Well, it was actually, Bob, it wasn't a bad memory. I was still getting paid. Yeah, right. <laughs> You know, just about uh, PAX and then the transfer from Wake Forest, just kind of what do they bring to K-State? Yeah, 25, the Wake Forest uh, transfer can really shoot. You got to give him no airspace. Got to meet him early in transition. Um, we'd prefer to make him floor it, put it on the deck. Don't want him to have any catch and shoot threes. If they run any uh, roll and replaces or pick and pops, uh, he's usually a guy involved in the shooting. Again, that's 25. And then PAC number 24, one of the nation's best shooters can really score the ball 
he is a guy that can score in spurts, uh, can put points on the board in a hurry. Uh, definitely, a, you know, a, a, a star type player in their conference. Had a great freshman year. Um, we've got to do, a, you know, we've got to all be alert uh, to any time that, that Pac has the ball for sure. And then, and then we have great respect, obviously, for 13 Smith, who played at Missouri and, and uh, you know, is, is strong at 6'5", at that 2'3 spot. So um, this is a good ball club because both their interior people, 20 and 21, both those guys can, can offensive rebound and they do a good job protecting uh, the rim. And then number three uh, at that small forward position um, and double zero, uh, both those guys um, on the perimeter are good players as well. And then Noel, uh, comes off the bench at that point guard position, has good speed, and and can get them easy transition baskets as well. Also, playing two games in two days, just how much prep work can you do on Cincinnati and Illinois, if any? Yeah, Nate, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it kind of gets back to coaching in the NBA when you have back-to-back -back games. I mean, certainly we have a formula for how we will prepare, win or lose, for the next opponent. Um you know, I won't start on them until after the Kansas State game is over. It's going to require the players in their hotel room when they're not with us in video sessions or at team meals for them to learn their opponent in a very, very short time on the second night. Uh, but right now, the sole focus is, you know, how do we win uh, on Monday night? And then who do we play on Tuesday? And then once we know who that opponent is, you know, we'll start diving into our prep work. But it's, it is very similar to – to, to playing in the NBA where you have back-to-back um, -back games and you've got to try to not overload your, your team with too much information, but give them, you know, the things that are necessary from a preparation standpoint on Tuesday. Thank you. Coach, you got a follow-up? Yeah, Coach, you said after the game that J.D. last year, the first half of the season wasn't very good defensively, and now he's one of your top, you know, shutdown defenders. Was there a specific moment where the light bulb went off for him or was it more of a, a gradual development on that side of the ball? No, I think it was, uh, I think it was a heightened urgency, Hutch, once we got to SEC play. Um, and I think he took pride on hearing us talk about some of the guards we were playing, um, but also gradually as well. I think his sit out year really, really helped from a development standpoint on understanding our concepts, understanding the importance of being a good team defender. But I really think, Andrew, when it kind of really, you know, he saw the light of it was when he started crawling up uh, and putting more pressure on people rather than playing at arm's length. I think he, he started being the aggressive uh, defender instead of, you know, letting the offense dictate. I think he's taking on the mindset that he would rather dictate what the offense does than the other way around. And I think as soon as he had that mentality, it, it really changed for him, Andrew. Curtis. Hey, just two quick ones for you, coach. Uh, in playing those back-to-back -back games, does that change any of the thinking in terms of minutes or rotations, or is it just kind of that one game at a, uh, at a time mentality? Yeah, it's for sure going to be one game with me. Um, is 40 minutes of how do we be Kansas State. I'm not really concerned or worried about anything beyond that. Um, you know, I know some coaches will, will sub a little bit more uh, knowing that you have a game the next night. Uh, my philosophy is that's a good way to also lose two games in a row. Um, you got one game right now that's the most important game. That's the game on your schedule. Um, and, and the next opponent's Kansas State. And anything else to me right now is meaningless. Now, as soon as the final buzzer goes off against K-State, the most important game will either be Cincinnati or Illinois. Um, and then we'll figure out, you know, at that point, do we need to give guys, you know, on the second night a, 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 an extra blow because they might have played a little bit more uh, the first night. But if we have to play five guys 40 minutes to beat uh, or compete, against Kansas State, we'll pay five guys 40 minutes and worry about the next game the next day. And then with it with it being a neutral site, you'll probably have a pretty good crowd there. Uh, I know you don't have any control over the music at the T-Mobile Center, but it, does the warm-up routine travel at all, or is that Bud Walton specific? Yeah, that's Bud Walton specific for sure. I mean, we're not going to 
Um, you know, we don't have control over the music. We, we understand that we're a neutral, um, you know, site and, and, you know, what basket we warm up. I have no idea right now. And so, um, you know, for us, we're comfortable doing that and Bud Walton in front of our own fans. It's no different than my dad at Minnesota. They only did that at Williams arena. Um, so we'll leave that to, to our, our own fans, but we do expect to have a good crowd. Um, I'm sure Kansas state will have a, a good following and Illinois always travels well. And I can tell you from playing Cincinnati in the NCAA tournament a few years ago, they traveled as well as anybody that we had played in the NCAA tournament. So I think that it'll be a good environment and I could, I would expect the lower bowl um, to be fairly full. I don't know what the upper level will look like, but for sure um, the lower bowl, which is really what you want your players and the opposing team and the coaches that you want that uh, environment to feel like, you know, kind of like a tournament NCAA type setting at being a neutral site. Why? <laughs> Coach, it's good to be on with you. I want to congratulate you on the run from last year. And with that said, I'm curious as to the challenges, even as long as you've been around the game, that you face this year with so many new players. What, what are the challenges in that as you see it? No, thanks, Wyatt. I mean, I think that, um, you know, maybe maybe my, and a, the, the, you know, the, the local guys have all heard me say it a lot. I mean, I think that just having a minor league background um, you know, where your best player gets called up on a, on a 10 day contract or uh, two days after your best player gets called up, your second best player gets called up. And then maybe a week later, one of your players goes and takes a bigger contract in Europe. And all of a sudden your three best players are gone. You've got to adjust on the fly. You've got to have adaptability. You've got to try to figure out as quickly as possible what your team's strengths and weaknesses are. You've got to figure out as quickly as possible what the best offensive and defensive schemes you can put together with your group, how much they can retain, how little they can retain, so on and so forth. And we're still trying to figure out why it, who we are. We're not really sure exactly what, of, what our identity is, um, but we have been able to um, kind of plug holes, you know, didn't rebound turn the ball over too much our assist to turnover ratio was upside down we've kind of solved all those pieces to the puzzle at least in a short sample size but now you know can we continue to evolve and get better at things that we haven't done well which is defend the three-point line and, and 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 maybe you know we could be better scoring in transition than what we have been we've been putting points on the board but we've also allowed um, too many points not to go on the board, whether it be, you know, 13 missed paint points the other night. Um, so we got a lot of things that we can continue to get better on, Wyatt. I appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll see you in Kansas City. Safe travels. Thank you. Appreciate that. You betcha. Final question, Bob. Hey, Eric, um, you know, with Florida beating Florida State the other day, they, they got in the poll. So there's, I think there's six SEC teams in now. And you're going to be playing a Big 12 team, maybe a Big 10 team. AAC is real good if you play Cincinnati. Um, do you kind of feel like you guys are carrying the SEC banner in, into this thing? You know, you want to want to represent, you know, obviously want to represent Arkansas, but, but want to represent the SEC as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting that, um, you know, the pride, um, like right now, you know, we're tonight, Alabama plays. So, you know, we're going to watch the, Alabama basketball game as a staff and we're going to be rooting for coach Oates and and the Crimson Tide to, to, to win tonight because that helps our league and last night I'm watching South Carolina and it's you know it's kind of weird like you're you know you're rooting for South Carolina and you're rooting for these SEC schools um, you know to win you're watching the Missouri game last night and coach Martin and yeah you want to beat them and you want to scout them and all that but right now you really need people in your conference to win. That becomes the utmost importance in it. And you really, when do you feel that? You feel that on selection Sunday. You know, I, I think we're all competitive. We all want to beat one another, but, but right now is a time that you certainly want your league to do really, really well. Um, you know, I've heard other coaches say, well, you know, we, I don't want someone in our league to have momentum. That's all a bunch of, baloney. I mean, we want everybody in our league to win every single night unless we play them. 
and until we get to conference time. So, yeah, we're, 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 we're rooting for every SEC team, and we hope that we can represent um, our conference in this tournament to the best of our ability. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I got, a, I got a, a text today from someone in the, in the WCC talking about, you know, what their league is doing to some Mountain West teams. So I think that this time of year, like, you've got to take great pride in your conference. You know, off type Bruce Weber talked about being familiar with your dad's routine, and he mentioned Crazy George. Who I think that was was that the unicycle guy, Crazy George. Anyway, he mentioned Man, Coach uh, Weber's got an awesome memory. That is so <laughs> cool. So Crazy George uh, is known as the world's greatest ball handler. <clears throat> True story. Uh, he played for my dad at Ashland College, and then he transferred. One of the first transfers ever, and he never he he couldn't jump shot couldn't make a layup but he was the world's greatest ball handler he could spin the ball on every finger could spin the ball off his toes um and crazy george to this day is still working in the basketball world he works for the dallas mavericks g league team the texas legend um and does a lot of pre-game post-game halftime does a lot of marketing off the floor going into schools in the dallas fort worth area it's amazing Coach Weber would remember Crazy George because he uh, he was somebody special. It was Mike Munson that rode that unicycle. And both those guys were on scholarships, by the way. There, there must have been more scholarships back then. No, no, only 13. But my dad only needed seven to play. So he figured he could use a unicycle guy and a guy spinning the ball on his toes. He would use two scholarships up on those guys. The ultimate entertainment coach. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Anybody got anything else? I don't want to feel rushed. I still got nine minutes and 48 seconds till I got to go to practice. We um, good? I mean, you mentioned, you brought up Mark yeah, Smith. Yeah, see, don't listen to Mike Kaywood. What do you well, got? No. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking Mike. It's just, you, you sound like you want us to ask you more stuff. Like you're. No, the you're players gonna... don't want me down there. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned Mark Smith. Um, you know, you're obviously familiar with him. What's, what do you think about him as a player? I guess he's averaging seven boards after two games. I mean, Smith can really rebound the ball. He's, you know, he's got good strength. He's got good body. He's got good size. He's not afraid of contact. Um, that's not a surprise at all. I thought he was a really good player last year in our league. I think that the way Coach Weber's using him is, is advantageous to him. Um, you know, he's a good three-point shooter. He's a good line drive, uh, dribble drive guy as well. He can absorb contact. Uh, certainly a guy that we've discussed with our ball club. He's on our scouting report. Ours and our antennas are up on, on Smith for sure. Okay. Anything else on your mind? Not really. <laughs> Did you get a good birthday present? Did you get a good birthday present yet? I haven't got, I mean, my son got me some sour gummies. He had them on my desk. My wife told me that we'll celebrate later tonight after practice. So, um, not really. I got some pretty cool text messages from, from some former players. Um, I'm not sure what Danielle's got up her sleeve. Hopefully, hopefully we got a, you know, she'll get me some, something good. Um, maybe a Mitch's surf shop hoodie. That would, that would be about the best gift I could, I could ask for. Sorry. What, what, what's that? Mitch's surf shop out of La Jolla, California, the best hoodies ever. Oh, hoodie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she'll get you a t-shirt. You don't have, you don't have enough t-shirts, do you? <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks. We're back and better than ever. A new web interface to start the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V 50 to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, and baseball postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. 